can and can't do, why is it that you don't get more chances or more dark matches or more opportunities to get in the ring? Don't you, you know, can't these guys, you know, say, hey, you know, I got, you know, my buddy here, you know him, you've seen him here, he's done this, he's done that, you know, hey, why not give him a shot? Well, I mean, it's easy to say that. I mean, a lot of guys I know that are in WWE or are still in TNA, you know, anytime I say, like, man, you know, I wish you still up here, or, they, you know, you should still be up here and stuff like that. You know, they can put in the suggestion, or even when I was there, I mean, I mean, I could put in a suggestion, but, I mean, that doesn't mean I, I can't hire anybody. Just like with your your uh, day-to-day job, you know, mm-hmm. you can say, hey, I, I know a guy, you know, that needs a job, you know, you could say something, but that you, know, you can't get him, you know, necessarily a job, you know. Um, I mean, there's like a handful of people that, you know, got that much pool, but, right. I mean, you know, I mean, a, a person can only do so much, you know, and I'm not going to lie. I mean, I've people there, you know, uh, have, you know, you know, threw my name in every once in a while to say, hey, how about bringing D-Ray back? Or, hey, you, you know, the, the kid with the hair, what about what do you think about him? <laughs> I mean, you know, and I'll say, you know, you know, I appreciate it. Thank you, but... I mean, they can only use so much. They are not the ones to to hire me, you know. Right, right. So, but I mean, I mean, uh, every day I'm I'm still trying to beat down that door to get back, you know, like I said on TV somewhere, you know, it would be here in the United States, Japan, somewhere, Puerto Rico, wherever. But um, that, I mean, that's what I'm doing 24/7, thinking how can I get in, get in, get in, get in, get in, you know. And that's what's on this about every wrestler's mind. What can I do to get me here? How you know? So, but one thing about it, I mean, I've been wrestling ten years, and I mean, I've met a lot of people, and a lot, you know, a lot of guys that are on TV now from back in the day, and it's kind of cool to know a lot of them because you never know. One day they might, you know, be in a position where you know whoever's in charge must say, "Hey, do you know anybody?" You know. Mm-hmm. So I mean, and that happens to a lot of the people you see on TV anyway because of who they know. You know, so, I mean, I mean, yeah, like I said, even when I was there, I mean, I can't just say, okay, man, you got a job. I can make suggestions. You know, I did that for people. You know, there's guys I know that I tried to help get a job there. But, I mean, you know, I can, I can only do so much, you know. Yep. No, we, I got a question from the, we got a question from the chat room from you know, Scott, Scott from Australia. Wanted to know okay. who are some of the guys you wrestled with while in uh, Sika's The Wild Samoans World Extreme Wrestling? <laughs> well, actually, Sika ran a, uh, XW2000, you know, and Alpha ran um, um, World Extreme Wrestling. Um, the guys, when I was there in Pennsylvania working for uh, Alpha in the World Extreme Wrestling, I worked with, uh, wrestled with, um, Gene Sninsky, um, you know, uh, who else? Man, uh, Homicide, you know. Uh, uh, so many guys have came through there, you know. Um, man, um, what's the chick name that was in TNA not too long ago with the short hair? I can't think uh, of it. Nikki name. Rock? Yeah, her, yeah, her, she was there, you know. I mean, there were so many people there. Um, uh, Reno, the Black Pearl Reno, he's big in Italy and stuff, you know. Um, I got a Black plenty Pearl? of points for him. Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, you know what, speaking of, you know, let me, I'll just go ahead and tell the story. When I, um, first got up there, because I was with, I was wrestling down in Florida for Sika. I was down there with Sika for a year and a half. Then I moved up to Pennsylvania working for Alpha, a World Extreme Wrestling. Now, Alpha's now living in Florida, running World Extreme Wrestling in Florida. But when I got up there to Pennsylvania, that, you know, my first day I met Reno, you know, and we kicked it off and everything. So I was, you know, I didn't have no place to stay, so I was uh, with him the whole time. We was running around the whole week to different places, you know. So, you know, uh, he helped me out a lot as far as uh, um, make sure I had a place to uh, stay and everything. But, uh, yeah, Reno, Black Pearl, um, Samu, um, um, Eric Young, you know, I knew Eric Young, you know, Back before both of us was in Tina, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, there's just so many. I probably can't even think of them right now, you know, that have gone on and became, you know, stars and stuff. But it's just been so many people that have gone through 
uh, World Extreme Wrestling, Low Key, you know, the Hit Squad, you know, and there's still some so many now that have done so much, you know, overseas and on the Indies and stuff, you know, but but that's only that that's only a few that can come into my mind right now, you know, Gangrel, what's the him, you know, <laughs> you know, Rikishi, um, Umaga, um, Rosie, you know, so all of those guys, you know. Okay, uh, you mentioned a couple of those guys, like Black Pearl and Gangrel. They're actually going to be on that um, Hogan's Australian tour. Uh, yeah. Uh, were yeah. Were you Were you at all contacted for that, or you know, were you interested in heading over there? Maybe didn't you know? Did they at all reach out? I to you? W- I wasn't contacted about uh, that, but I did uh, get in contact with them. But uh, as far as what I know, I mean, everything is, is book solid, you know, for that. But, I mean, you know, hey, things can change. This is the wrestling business, you know. Tomorrow I might be, you know, who knows where, you know. So, but um, uh, I did get in contact with them, but I think I got in contact with them a little a little late, though. Okay. Now, um, when I was doing a little research, you know, on you, it said that the the D D Ray three thousand came up because of you know the the similarities between you and Andre three thousand of Outcast. That is that yeah, where I the don't, name came from. You know what? That's that was what Jer- I'll, I'll tell you how that all came about. Me personally, I don't see. I have no resemblance <laughs> at all whatsoever to Andre three thousand. I'm sure anybody that reads <laughs> that kind of you know, shakes their head and goes, what? You know, he don't look like Andre 3000. But what happened was, when I got with TNA, you know, I, when I started wrestling, I was, um, I was wrestling as Don Crisis, you know. And um, um, Jeremy Borash came up to me, and he was the one who said, hey, um, you look kind of like, you know, the guy from Outcast, you know, uh, the Andre 3000. Um, <laughs> think of something 3000. And then he's like, come to me in an hour. I'm busy. Okay. So I'm, I'm, you know, walking around in the locker room just, just trying to think, you know, brainstorming, you know, trying to think of something quick. This, you know, this is when TNA was still doing a weekly pay-per-view in Nashville, and I had to have something within an hour, you know, so I, you know, could have a name that day. So I'm just walking back and forth, and, you know, I bump into Christopher Daniels, and he sees me and says, what are you, what's, what are you doing? You know, I said, they, the office told me to think of something 3,000. He just bursts out, D-Ray. Okay, so then I go to the office and I just tell them D-Ray stuff. Okay, right, and they write it down, and that was how that came about. But it, to me me personally, I don't look, and I'm sure you guys, you know, the same pictures, I don't look nothing like Andre 2000. That was Jeremy Borash, and, you know, I, in his mind, I guess I do. I don't know, but that's how that came about. Well, you are skinny and black, so. <laughs> With wild hair, I guess. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe that was it. May, maybe that's the resemblance. You know, those three characteristics. I don't know. I'm kind of, I guess I look like Andre 3000 a bit, too. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, that's everybody then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah. a lot of people... Let, let, let me just ask you this real quick, Jay. A lot of people aren't really clued in on Jeremy Borash's role there, today. Everybody sees him, I guess, assumes that he's just an announcer, but he was there when when it started. Does he have, is he in creative or, and has more pull than just, he's not just an announcer back there, is he? Well, you know what? I mean, I've seen him do so many things. I, I know, I, you know, I'm kind of cloudy on, you know, what's, what, is, what exactly is his position or positions because I'll see him do so much stuff. You know, I'll see him... You know, sometimes in the creative meetings, you know, I'll, you know, doing the announcing thing. Of, of course, everybody knows he does the announcing, but he does a lot of stuff backstage, you know, and he works on a lot of things. Like when I remember when, when he was, when he came to me and said, think of a name, you know, um, he was with the, the people doing the, the website development and stuff. So, I mean, basically, um, my take on it and from what I've seen him do, he's a little bit of everything there, you know. He's a little bit of everything there. Now, as far as how much pool he has, I don't know. You know, I really can't say. But I, I know one thing. You know, he's been there since the beginning. He's still there now. So that doesn't say a lot to people, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So, um, but, I mean, um, he, from everything I've seen, he's a little bit of everything, you know. 
Gotcha.